Ah, baseball. An American pastime. In a subject for engineering research, the local pro baseball team has been experiencing issues with overly congested entrances and long lines. They have requested help from a nearby university to look at the problems to possibly improve the fan experience. Enter Mark, baseball fan and student researcher who is excited about developing solutions. His research team visited the empty stadium, making notes about the capacity and parking. Upon leaving, Marty felt as though something was missing. Live data. At the next game, Marty stood outside with the notepad and camera, ready to observe how the crowd of fans interacted with the stadium. Marty focused on game number two, the one closest to the parking lot, where the bulk of fans show up within one hour of the game start. Aha! He saw how the congestion at gate number two led to long lines at the gate and frustrated fans who missed the beginning of the game. What additional data should Marty collect to help inform recommendations? Should it only be observations of crowd movement? Motivated by Marty's effort, his research team took action. Armed with maps, interviews, people counters, sensors, and data about the projected future of the stadium, the team analyzed areas of congestion relative to the stadium's layout and signage. Marty and his team think that making some structural changes to the stadium's entrance and parking area could steer fans towards the other three gates, reducing congestion and ultimately making the fans happier. However, those changes might be expensive, so they have to tell their stakeholders a convincing story that shows the problem and the potential solution clearly. As Marty prepares to visually present his research, he needs to think about what data to show and how the data needs to be presented to the audience. Marty might be tempted to show his audience all of his data, but data all mushed together doesn't mean anything and can be difficult to understand. In order to communicate his research effectively, Marty needs to consider the main keys to data visualization. The first key is to think about the main takeaways from the data. He needs to consider what the stakeholders want to know, what they need to know, and the action that he wants them to take after learning about the results. The way Marty can do this is by creating a convincing story designed to highlight the takeaways, one that explains the connections between important results and actions that should come next. Similarly, Marty needs to determine the core ideas and results from the research that lead up to his goal. He will need to examine the evidence that builds on those core ideas and again, impacts his stakeholders. It's important that Marty doesn't only pick out the evidence that agrees with his core ideas. Showing conflicting evidence can be a powerful part of the story and continue to help stakeholders and understand the bigger picture and make sense of the data. So now that Marty has his main takeaways and has determined his core ideas and results, the next key is to consider the best visual approach to display his data. In Marty's case, displaying data with graphs and charts is better than just using a bunch of numbers or tables. Audiences unfamiliar with the data will understand graphs and charts more quickly and easily. When deciding what graphics will best present the data in context, remember the different graphics have different strengths. Bar graphs are better with comparisons. Line graphs are better at showing data over time. And pie graphs are best for showing parts of a whole. Marty can even use colors, animations, and even different fonts and styles to emphasize or de-emphasize information. The goal is to make the data as easy to understand as possible. So armed with this in mind, Marty and his team decide to create a line graph that shows the distribution of fans entering gate two over time, using color and shading to highlight the problem area and words to draw attention to key details. He also uses a bar graph to compare the number of fans entering each gate and several annotated stadium maps to help him show the story of why fans tend to flock toward gate two from the parking area. With these data visualizations, Marty will help his stakeholders navigate his research and see just how important his findings could be. Now, think about your own project. What creative visualizations can you use to present your data in a way that resonates with your stakeholders and audience? Maybe you can use these tools to develop some powerful visuals and hit your next research project out of the park.